Season long two, time no see. long oh. time no see, long time no hang out, and all that. We're goofing around with Instagram. They seem to have changed something. They insisted that I have to go through all the. We don't know. We don't know if we're live on Instagram or not. We're now. definitely live with you. Give us a <laughs> shout out if we're live on YouTube. Um, looks like some folks are drinking Silver Needle. Mm. Some folks have some green tea. Um, some folks are too lazy to brew at the moment. That's all good. Yeah. That's all good. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, Sunday Tea Book. Season two, episode one, episode one. Who is excited about the book live on, on both? both. Oh, oh, we got, thank you. we got people covering us on both platforms. That's awesome. Just to remind the Instagram folks, we won't be staying on Instagram forever. So jump over to uh, YouTube to catch the full meal deal. We're going to have a great, we've got a great beginning of season two lined up for you. Mm. And oh. what will be? It's just stressful getting set up for these lives. It's so want... nice that they can, you guys can hear me, you can see me. So I'm just like, oh, settling in. Oh, let us know what's in your cup. You guys did that, a lot of you. Some of you didn't. Some of you didn't brew. Because you have been sitting here for hours I've just to make here. sure all the uh, technical issues won't happen. Okay. Or if it happens, yeah, if they happen, they happen. Well, I'm hoping for, I'm, I'm <laughs> hopeful for tea trivia time. So Instagram people jump over for that if you want to check out that. We are brewing. So we, you guys let us know what's in your cup if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. We are brewing uh, a very appropriate. Okay, 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 sorry, sorry, I have support. No, no, that's okay. We're, we're out of practice. Nothing. We're brewing hear nothing, a bro. super appropriate tea that matches today's topic. Guju uh, Sun. I'll throw down to the camera so you can show the folks the leaf. There we go. I think they can see that. <laughs> I don't know what's showing. The Instagram is blocking it. But maybe I'll show Instagram. You show them. Okay. Uh, Instagram, there's the Gucci Zasun. Let us know what you're brewing in Instagram land. We and basically stand the cell phone in front of the screen that blocked my session seeing us. But Think you Let's go with this. Probably. Then you can okay, see what they go. see. Now no, we can see better what they see. This is better. Oh, we oh, got an we aloha go. from Hawaii and everything. This is super exciting. Oh, nice. Okay, well, this is a Mintian Guju Zisun and a Gu. Let me speak that slowly. Guju <laughs> Zisun. Mm. So Guju is the place name uh, in Zhejiang, and uh, Zisun means uh, purple bamboo, and it's the name of this tea. Uh, reason we're choosing this to kickstart season two is uh, because Louis really love love this tea. Yes, his favorite. Mm, and this is where the first uh, royal tea garden in Tang Dynasty was built, also in uh, Guzhu Shan. Mm. So I kind of echo the uh, topic today. Yes, absolutely. And you can check out a blog post we have about that mm. location on our website. I'll put the link in the description down below mm. after the live. Uh, so guys, welcome to Sunday Tea Book, epi uh, Season 2, Episode 1. What is Sunday Tea Book, you may be wondering. For those of you new, I see many familiar faces in the crowd, and uh, I do see some new ones on Instagram and on YouTube. What is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article uh, that either has no translation or has a dubious translation, and we go over it and explain it. We dive into it, dissect it, talk about some of the sort of confusing parts. Uh, you may wonder, well, why, why do you do that live? Why do you get on camera and, and do something as seemingly boring, it's not, I promise, as translate a book or an article or a paper? And the reason is this, my experience with Chinese tea as a relative newcomer, because it is a deep, deep topic, uh, is that in diving into the translation, many questions come up. And these questions actually informed me a lot about sort of the inner workings of Chinese tea, thank you. The inner workings of Chinese tea and the, uh, just, just give me a great background. So why not share it with all of you? Furthermore, it gives you guys a chance to ask questions that I might, have not, I might not have thought of. Um, it gives you guys to give your, a chance to give your input. So that is why we do that as a live. There's so much nuance, so much good stuff happening here. Um, if we just posted a finished translation, I really feel like everybody would be missing out on a lot. 
So, and also, of course, back by popular demand, whoops, <laughs> back by popular demand is tea trivia time. So Instagram folks, like I said before, jump over to YouTube to catch that because we're going to be closing off the Instagram very shortly. Um, scurry on over there. Um, before you do that, whatever you do on Instagram to like the video, do that. I don't know, thumb up or whatever. On YouTube, for sure, hit that thumb up if you're glad to see us back. If you want to wait and see if it's worth a thumb up, you know, wait, I don't mind. But, um, and, and you know, even if you don't like it, give it a thumb down, I don't care, just do something. Uh, <laughs> comments, questions, we need them, okay? That's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Um, and finally, oh, I wanna say though, uh, if you wanna support the channel and uh, uh, whatnot, the, really the best way, a thumb up is great, we really appreciate it. The best way is to head on over to our website. We've got a whole host of amazing teas. I will be publishing the schedule for Sunday Tea Book Season 2 with all the teas we're going to brew. So what we found in other Sunday tea books is it's super fun to brew along with you guys. So if you want to mm -hmm. go ahead and grab those teas off our website, that's a great support to us and fun for you guys too. You brew it up, we brew it together, we sip it, we chat about it. It's excellent. So that is a cool way to do that. This season, oh my God, this season, right? The classic of tea by none other than Lu Yu, written 1200 years ago. Okay, terrifying undertaking for us. This is an ancient book full of all kinds of information. Is it all directly relevant today? It's not really about that. It's about a deep dive into the history of tea. Some of it's relevant. Some of it's just going to give us a great background. Anyway, you guys asked for it. We're doing it. It's a big undertaking. We're super excited. But it's 1,200 years old book. How is that going to work? You must be wondering. That I will talk later. <laughs> I will just quickly Wait, show you. Oh. First, I'm going to tell the Instagram folks. Uh, bye bye. Oh, yeah. Bye time bye. to head over to YouTube, Instagram <laughs> people. Thank you for joining us. us, but it's time for us to go full screen for us and say bye bye. Say bye bye. Okay. Uh, before we dive in a little bit about today, I'd like to show you how to brew this tea. I found a lot of plants we like to brew in Gaiwa, which is totally fine. But if you want to try uh, glass brewing, I think I can quickly show you two ways because this is so easy. One of the, mm, I think I use that most of the time when I brew uh, green tea. So one way is the easiest way. No matter which tea, which green tea you are brewing, you can always use that. Super simple, basically. Okay. Ooh, fancy, look at you. She's a little producer. Uh, I'm getting better at this. She is rocking okay. it. Dump the tea leaves and pour in the tea. So Gu Zhu Zisui, we consider that more of a median tightness in terms of how tight the leaves are rolled, a median tightness. So uh, I'm just going to boil in the uh, pour in the water. Rather Ooh, gentler, really and I'm trying to here. Okay. Oh, nice. Give it enough direct water, but a little bit on the glass as well. So to tone how much impact from the hot water you give it. Mm. So that's one way. Then you can wait till the leaf a little bit, you know, sink mm. down. Then you can start sipping as the temperature feels right. And you can refill later. That was fantastic. Or you can do another slightly fancier way. Go back for you. Okay. <laughs> you put that in you before me too, but there's a second way, okay? Pretend there's no leaf there. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's okay. I thought I was being helpful. It's okay. All right, Pretend there's no leaf there, okay? Let's put if they thought it wasn't tea. live, they know it's live now. <laughs> put some hot tea water. Tea water? Just water. Put the leaves in. If you watch our How to Brew Green Tea, you would know this is called Zhong Tou Fa. Means you give it a little tea, a little bit of water. Then where you swir, su, swirl, 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 sorry, swirl this leaves. It's a, it's really gentle but a great agitating for the green tea leaves. So you can enjoy the leaf, the aroma, and also let the water gently, gently penetrate in the tea leaf. Then add in the water. Mm. So pretty. Okay, there's that. 
this is how we are gonna sift it from the glass. Like Jen said, there's a fantastic, gorgeously presented video. She did all the work, so I can say it that way. <laughs> Gorgeous video on how to brew green tea. I'll pop the link to that down below too. I gotta take notes or I'm gonna forget all the links I promised. <laughs> oh, guys, thank you guys for uh, give us approval in terms of uh, production and cameras, okay? <laughs> yes, thank you it's very much. It's a great audience that really... For your generosity. Yeah. Look at everybody. Simmerjeet's here, Jan is here, you yeah. are here. Super good to see everybody. Yeah, Hawaii, Oklahoma. Yeah. Yay! Okay, so... It is really hard to uh, actually commit to do the classic of tea because it is, like we mentioned over and over, it's 1200 years ago. How we speak are different, the way we use language is different, and this long history also means there are so many versions of the classic of tea. Not widely different, but uh, in terms of individual characters and uh, uh, you know phrases, it could be different. There are like 38 versions of them and some argues there are over 60 versions mm. of that so there's a little bit of uh, argument and uh, academic uh, like a research or study in terms of uh, which character is better and stuff like that mm. and so and for us the translation works like two layers first from ancient Chinese to modern Chinese to a more understandable even just for Chinese then is to uh, from in, uh, Chinese to English so that's I found that's very very challenging <laughs> but we still wanted to do it because um, I have read a little bit of the English version of uh, the classic of tea and sometimes I find there's uh, mistranslations and sometimes there's uh, like um, how should I say it? like a misunderstanding it's just a, a myth parts of the original text maybe oh, because an omission yeah like, the like, omission they totally mm -hmm. just uh, skip that part and right. not uh, translate it right so um that's why i feel like uh, it might not be a bad idea to fill in some gaps there and also it's uh, i found a lot of times when we read uh like say classic tea or even just normal things like how different people look at the same thing could be very different so um what I mean is, for example, in classic tea, right? It talk about uh, leaves when it's uh, curled is uh, better than when leaves is flat. But maybe if I'm just a tea beginner, all it means is okay, curl is better than flat. It's pretty like a uh, literal. But as a tea uh, professional, or for us, when we look at the leaves, what does the curled leaf mean? What does the flat mean? Leaf means it means different cultivar. There's some cultivar in implication, the quality of the cultivar implication, and uh, the timing also implies the timing. So those we will expand later when we actually dive into the text. So that's what I mean by, uh, you know, like uh, when we love a photo, we think, oh, it's a beautiful photo because I'm not a pro photographer. But probably for photographers, when they look at a beautiful photo, they will analyze the lighting, the uh, composition, the construction of where to put stuff, the ratio, everything, it become really technical. Mm -hmm. So so we wanted to bring you a little bit deeper meaning, a little bit more than just the text message. I think uh, it would be quite interesting. Yeah, and more than just the literal text. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so with that being said, I also want to point out that uh, none of, like, neither of us are pro translators mm. um, so meaning don't expect too much in terms i mean translation is a piece of art right yes. uh, you have to translate accurate but also fits in the culture fits it, it yeah. it's a whole whole yeah it's art coalescing accurate. with uh, history deep mm. historical understanding so that is something. that is very hard for us for my level to achieve so when you read, we will be posting the translated version on the website. So when you read those, um, I think what, what I'm trying to do is to reflect truly what is in the text and translate it out in the understandable language. Mm -hmm. My, 
for sure not the best version, and uh, that's work for somebody else. For me, it's for T knowledge wise accurate, language wise mm, not misleading, mm -hmm. and also I wanna stay very true to the original text. I minimal interpretation, minimal yeah of our own spin yeah when you write that you will uh, when you read that you will probably notice that it's uh, awkward it's not like a novel or a narrative style mm -hmm. you would expect mm -hmm. it's more like a poem so it's a, a chunk of something a chunk of something a chunk of something so um, and i try not to connect them to make that logical just to stay as how the original text yes does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think so, yeah. And I think that's related to the f uh, one of the questions we have, which is about are the translations like, looks like are they uh, a direct copy of the original or are they a version that's not in the original words? And I think it's a combination of the two, mm -hmm. right? A lot of them are, and that's what we're trying to do is stay as original as possible, but convey the meaning, which is of course tricky. Yeah, but our pro is, I'm a yes. native Chinese guy. I speak native yes. Chinese and I speak some English. And, um, you know, I still have that Chinese talking habit. Mm. Uh, so a pro is I can read that, I know how to translate, and I could tell that uh, when I say something or something, it could be misleading every now and then. You know, if I didn't mm. fully express myself better, I think Phil would be in a great position to help me out because he is the native English person. And yes. honestly, 10 years of living together, we have so many times that we realize that, uh, you know, I am saying something and my English is understandable. Perfect. I think I express myself 100%. He thinks he totally understands me 100%. Yes. But later on, we find out that wasn't what I meant and yep. that wasn't. Uh, you know, yeah. it wasn't the case. I just want to elaborate on that because that's super funny, right? So together 10 years, which is, you know, these are the times that make that hard, right? The best case scenario is she says something, we understand, I understand, and we're both catch the, the intended meaning. The second best case is she says something and I don't understand and I tell her straight up, I don't understand. Or we, you say, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Perfect, because now we can clarify. And the worst case was the one you kind of hinted at, but I think mm -hmm. it's worth zoning in on, where you say it and it's it's clear and it makes sense, but the way it's understood is actually off. So but it, uh, it feels understood by the receiver, me. You think, oh, I said that right, it's understood, but the actual intended meaning, lost. That's the worst case scenario, and that happens more than you would think. Um, and it causes, you know, and despite that, we're still together 10 years. So I'm pretty good at <laughs> catching those on the radar. Yes. yes. And I'm really wordy, as you probably noticed, because I like to explain that. Nothing wrong with explaining that too clear, but when it's blurry, a lot of times we have a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back to the book itself. As mentioned, doing Sunday tea book, the whole purpose is that we stand on the shoulders of giants mm. to learn about Chinese tea. Mm. Uh, if you are interested in you know, our summarize or learn from our, we have tons of video on that. Mm. So Sunday Tea Book is about uh, uh, translating and how people understand what already been done in China but not much done here. So it's not me who is translating the classic of tea. Mm -hmm. There is already a masterpiece on this topic by a tea giant, which is the book I will be using for this. So, Cha Jing Shu Ping, The Classic of Tea Narrative and a Commentary by Mr. Wu Jianong. So, a little bit about uh, Mr. Wu Jianong. He is the founder, uh, the founder. <laughs> nice, nice, really nice picture. Capture the assets. So he is the founder of modern Chinese tea industry. If you are in Chinese tea industry, absolutely heard of him. Uh, first vice minister of agriculture, founder of China Tea. So if you drink uh, Puar, you know that big logo with tea and stuff. He is the first uh, um, manager, CEO, uh, the head of the, the corporation. 
So he uh, does a lot. He did a lot of job in uh, exporting, including building a quality standard, and and how to test the quality of tea, making policies, and also encourage a lot of the machine making to transform Chinese tea industry from this little uh, like individual farmer mold to a more standardized, modernized, uh, controlled way. Mm. And uh, he also started the first uh, tea department in Fudan University. Uh, that was the first ever to bring tea education to post-secondary education, in, uh, education institutes. And um, I bet you a lot of you wish we had that here, right? Uh, uh, undergrad studies in tea. Yeah. <laughs> and beyond, actually. Right. I yeah, mean, it, it is. It, it was a major thing mm -hmm. to really mm -hmm. take that serious rather than just okay, a hobby or just something we traditionally do, right? Mm -hmm. To study that. So he dedicated more than uh, over seven decades of his life to tea. Even in his latest, he still travels to various tea regions to help with farmers, to help with the tea development in local areas. Uh, he has always been a very prolific writer. Uh, published numerous papers, books, uh, you know, elaborating on tea commerce, cultivation process, and tea history. More like an academic style, like tea histories. So, one of the most important book in his later life is what I just showed you, the classic of tea narrative and commentary. That's just my translation. I don't know if it's uh, the book is done in English. Just a shu means narrative kind of in Chinese and ping means commentary. So that's how I <laughs> just translate that uh, name. And he started the book uh, since 1979. The book was published in 1987 uh, when he was 90 years old. <laughs> uh, right, so a real magnum opus, like just a life work. And that gives you an idea of the complexity, right? The It's not a, okay, yeah. I'm going to write a book this year sort of project at all. Yeah, in the preface, he mentioned how much time they devoted to how to construct uh, this book, how to make that uh, valuable. Same with what we were talking about. Because it's ancient, sometimes you feel like it doesn't, it doesn't have a real use for modern days. So they, uh, he spent a lot of time to make this book, explaining the past and make that uh, really valuable for modern times. And in the book, in the book, he used 292 references, and most of them are ancient texts in various domains from detailed research and study of Louis classic of tea. Mm. So, uh, what it is means if there is some like places mentioned in the classic of tea, he would reference cross reference with the different. Uh, books or texts from the same time about that place is the name as long history happens right the places change names and stuff mm -hmm. to um, kind of an, uh, to heck places disappear double, yeah double yeah. check on the truth of <laughs> what Louis said and a cross reference mm -hmm. between different versions we mentioned like uh, he checked the 38 versions of that to compare the differences and uh, uh, to, how should I say, like an archaeology way, like a historian way to study and research which character is more likely to be the original one. Mm. So that was a lot of work and ancient texts, and it's, uh, it's just something, it's really hard for me to really mm. access. So this is a, an absolutely uh, great book. Not to mention for this book, there's also other people helped drafting, mm. helped uh, editing, proving this, like uh, Mr. Deng Naipong, which is a renowned tea historian, also the father of a Guizhou tea, like uh, the modern Guizhou tea, or Mr. Zhang Tanghen, he's dedicated to tea education and was the first professor for tea PhD students, and uh, Mr. Qian Liang, and experts in uh, tea commerce and also uh, in tea production as well. So just um, to name a few. So this book, again, if you want to see that, 
<laughs> it's all Chinese, but um, yeah. It's uh, tricky. Yeah, Cha Jin Ping Su is, uh, if anybody w curious want to learn about it, even just the class of T, no implications, no extensive reading, this is the uh, authentic book, like a must read. The sort of go-to translation for all the reasons you just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. The amount of effort and detail put into uh, cross-referencing and getting that translate translation right. Um, so with all that said and the immense complexity, like we're talking about a 1200 year old text, like Juba Jia said, it's sort of like translating Beowulf, you know, in old English, you know, it's, a, it's just so distant in language. Uh, there's so much has changed. Um, every word kind of has to be examined uh, and sort of qualified to make sure the meaning is right. Um, I think unlike that, it, which is a story, this is a bit more of a, this is more of a treatise, as it's called, a treatise of tea. It's, a, it's actually, uh, a, you know, we're, we're talking about something from a literati, from a, a high-class guy. So, so because of all that complexity, unlike previous seasons where we've sort of done a read-through mm. of, uh, of our document, this season, we will be diving right into the highlights from each section as we go, uh, covering key talking points, uh, like some of you were um, mentioning, maybe uh, doing some clarification and some expounding on various points. Um, because, it's, because it's ancient Chinese, it needs a lot of context check. There won't be time for a read through and to do all of that. There's gonna be a ton of that. But as always, we will post the finished translation up on the website so you'll be able to see it there again with the qualification uh, which which Jen mentioned right it's it's gonna sound chunky uh, we purposely didn't try to add a bunch of words to give that narrative flow like we would expect in modern times the that's what the live is about that's what the right. live is about that's what we're here to do is to provide all that context so the video will be on the website with the finished translation with that being as true to form as possible so that the understanding can be conceived. You watch the video, boom, you've got it all right there. Kabam, just like that. So it'll be posted there. The video won't be immediate, but the translation will be very soon. And um, make sure I didn't miss anything. And it'll all be down in the description down below. Mm. Um, I should mention this, the live video will disappear for a while. It'll come back on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that mm -hmm. with all the uh, links and stuff in the description preserved. Yes. A couple interesting questions from right. the audience. Uh, Eric asked, where is the school that uh, that was started by Wu Junong? And somebody piped, chimed in and did say it's uh, Fudan. Yeah, right? just the department, not the whole school. Yeah. <laughs> it started the tea department in the school. Now, is that and the only place where that exists? or is that well, No, no. It, now it's expanded to many universities. Right. So he actually... Department. So it was more than just a school or the notion of school. Is he sort of elevated it? Would you know what we're talking about here? Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, because we're kind of bouncing between. He elevated tea from a you know a, an agricultural endeavor only, and brought that into academia with a great foresight, sort of like the machine, right? To make that something that can be really elevated, uh, you know, economically elevated, but also uh, process elevated. So really cool. Mm. And. The Eric is as is it more of a historical kind? Is it uh, how relevant it is with the today's teas, uh, or is it more a historical account? I mm -hmm. think the question you can judge by the end of this read, but my goal is to relate the both, and it's based on Mr. Juno's book, which he also is on the same page of not just the focus, just talk, if we just talk about the text, it's not much of the meaning. It's so related as the tea, the development of the tea continues as he, uh, when after Louis started this line. Mm. There are true certain things about tea that uh, Louis has uh, summarized, like the, he also summarized the history before his time. Those still stays true. He talked about the cultivars of the trees. Also, a lot of them stays true. The job is to translate that in modern language. Is what exactly does he mean? Like, what I mean is, you know, sometimes if I say, ah, oh, the moon is pretty, maybe in English it means the moon is pretty. 
maybe in French, uh, not in French, sorry, maybe in Japanese it means I love you. That's a classic like translation example. Just right. to say in different uh, contexts, in different cultures, things mm. could mean different things. And this is, I think, mm. my job to make that clear. And uh, I hope it has a lot of uh, use for today's mm. just regular tea lover who, of course, a little bit love to be a little bit nerdy like me. I was gonna say. Yeah, they are will be touching we will be touching a lot on Chinese uh either language, you don't have to learn it, but just to point out and you there's a culture implication, there's tea itself, there's tons of things uh, we wanted to learn. And if it touches anything that we already elaborated on in previous Sunday tea book or other videos we will just quickly refer there because yeah. we have a lot of great and new information to learn about and it's very useful for us all. yeah i like your original answer like let's see it at the end of season two yeah you guys of, tell at me at the end of the that. read you'll, you'll see how useful it is but i have a feeling for this group of tea nerds there will be plenty of applicable stuff for today and uh and for the future mm. all right guys you've been waiting for this i sure hope it works but it is hang on i gotta do all my button pressing here i don't know what time is it? Do you guys know what time it is? Are you waiting for that? I hope you're waiting for that. Here we go. I sure hope it works after all this buildup. Tea! Trivia! Time! Oh yeah, here we go. Pray for me that this works. All right. I stopped the cheering. Ooh, and it worked. I think it's gonna work. Tea trivia gonna... time, guys. What is tea trivia? Tea trivia is where we, just before we kick off the meat and potatoes of Sunday Tea Book, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have a few fun questions. You're gonna get a score and see who wins, but it's really not about that at all. This is just about having fun. I try to make them funny. I try to make them a little bit useful too. It's not to win, but of course, if you win, I'm gonna be super proud of you. Here we go, let's get started. All right, folks, the classic of tea was written during this dynasty. Was it one, the Xia dynasty, two, the Tang dynasty, three, the Sui dynasty, or four? the Song Dynasty. You can see the clock up on your screen. You've got 30 seconds to get your answer. All you need to do is hit the number and push enter. Try not to embellish it too much. You might confuse the computer. The computers are not as AI as we would like them to be. They get confused very easily. Just hit the number, hit enter, and that will allow your answers to be tabulated. But we don't really care if the answers are, if the score is messed up, it's all good. So look at all the folks. People love tea trivia time. I see TTT with exclamation marks. I think Greg knows it's really live now, right, Greg? This is super live. <laughs> um, yeah, you can put two question mark. That might work. So the computers are calculating your answer. You still have a few minutes to get your answers in. I see them rolling in strong, strongly leaning towards two. A couple answers for four. Again, it's all for it's all for fun. But if you had watched the leader videos, you would know this. I'm <laughs> just kidding. All right, way to go, everybody. It looks like just about everybody got it right. Um, just so you know, those are all real dynasties with uh, Sui and Song kind of bookending the Tang Dynasty, and Xia is right at the beginning of Chinese history, so super, super too old for this. Uh, just a little Chinese dynasty education for you. I always try to kind of, she was so impressed. I always try to impress her. All right, so yeah, the Tang Dynasty, 1,200 years ago. I believe it was in the... Um, Beginning-ish of Tang. Did he wrote that? No, mid Tang. Mid Tang. There we go. All right, folks. You are transported back in time, and you run up to Lu Yu because you've managed to track him down because you're tea nerds, and you say Lu Yu, Lu Yu, Lu Yu, Lu. Ooh, that's super hard to say fast. Lu Yu, Lu Yu, Lu Yu, Lu. I love your classic of tea. Why might Lu Yu be offended? Why would that offend him? Is it one because you're a peasant? <laughs> Two, you're a foreigner. Is it three because you used his name, or four because you got his name wrong? Ooh, if you saw our first warm-up video to this season of Sunday Tea Book, this was one of the questions we posed during that video. We promised you we'd answer it. Ta-da, here it is. <laughs> All right, I'll pass my glass over. For a refill. All right, so, Last, you've got your last few seconds here to get your answers in. The computer is tabulating your answers and will be moving on shortly. Why would Lu Yu think you were at least a little bit rude based on that comment? And it looks like Jubai Jia got it right. 
And uh, that's great. Good for you. It was a tricky one. That one was a tricky one. Uh, lots of abstinences, or maybe the computer, um, the computer was slow to pick up your answers. I see lots of, uh, lots of answers came in. Seems like they were a little late. That's okay. We know that you guys got it right. We'll give you all full marks. So yes, back in that time, uh, you were to use title, I think, to address people. Uh, I'm looking we for a little help. We have viewers. We have. Oh, sorry. Too late. We got to go to the next question. <laughs> all right. So question three. Aside from being a tea sage, Lu Yu was also renowned for being, was it one, a poet, an antique collector, a geographer, and a literati? Was it two, a gymnast, a long distance runner, and a yogi? Was it three, a fantastic cook? Or four, an architect, a school teacher, and a painter? So, based on our last question, get your answers in as quickly as possible. Not sure what's going on, if there's lag or what, but uh, definitely you want to kind of answer as quick as you can to make sure you get. So what were Lu Yu's other well-known, and it's worth uh, mentioning, again, if you check out the original video, but he was equally well-known for these other things as he was for being a tea sage, so, and perhaps even more so for some of them. Last few moments to get your answers in. I see lots of answers coming in. Very good. I always try to trick you guys and make it a little bit hard. You know, I, give, I throw out a few easy ones, but look at that. I, I tricked the crowd. I tricked the crowd. I got to find my... Oh, I don't know if that worked. I tried to make a little sound. That's okay. Anyway, great work, Jubaijia and Bodique. You guys got the uh, right answer. And my tricky one was number four. I kind of purposely set it up to look pretty realistic. Got you guys. Anyway, yes, he was a poet, uh, antique collector, geographer, and of course, very well-known literati. All right, so next question. How long did it take the classic of tea to become popular? I'll give you a hint. No, I won't give you any hints. No hints, no, no hints. hints, no hints. <laughs> anyway, one, it was an instant success. Two, it never really took off, actually. Three, uh, sometimes I think you might spray your tea when I say the answer. Three, it became popular shortly after Lu Yu died. Or four, it became popular during the Song Dynasty. So how long did it take for the classic of tea to become popular? Oh, I made some people cry. I feel really bad. <laughs> he invented the Olympic mm -hmm. Games. That's a good <laughs> one. That's the yogi one. I love that. Yeah. Keeping it fun, folks. Keeping it fun. How long how did, did it take? Again, if you saw the video, you know why I'm making that weird gesture. Here come the answers rolling uh -huh. in. I see lots for uh, four. I see some for one. I don't see any for two. Darn. Uh, just because it's funny. You never know. Oh, I did see Igor did guess too. Good guess, Igor. I like that you guessed that. And it looks like Bodique watched all our videos or is really, really smart. One, it was an instant success. Song Dynasty was a tricky one, guys. Uh, I'm always throwing out those curveballs, but uh, good guesses, everybody. But indeed, um, as we talked about in our second lead-up video to this, uh, this book was an instant success, uh, largely because the culture at the time was so very rich with uh, intellectuals and uh, people who had enough time to really dive into tea. All right, here is question five, the last question for tea trivia time. What? Where did we travel last summer brewing tea everywhere we went? Is it one? We didn't travel. Haven't you heard of COVID? <laughs> Two, we went to Greece to see the ancient ruins. Three, to China to visit the tea gardens. Or four, across Canada, in particular, the Rocky Mountains. Where did we travel last summer? What a tea trip. I got a boo. <laughs> So the reason I put this question was so I could shamelessly plug our travel videos, but I'm not gonna tell you to check those right now because that would be kind of cheating. So first make your guess, and then you'll get videos about one of those places that are on always the list. Always four. <laughs> Eric is always four. Yes, yes, Charlie Brown answered, except yeah. Charlie Brown is C. All right, where do we, answers are flowing in, the computer is tabulating the results, and here we go, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my Ooh. gosh, we got a sweep. I don't know if my sounds are winning, but I'm going to give the wind sound. Nice. I don't know if it worked. I might have gone out into the ether. I don't know. I liked your video from 
bracket impressively. Right. Awesome work, guys. That wraps up T-Trivia Times. Now the computer is busy calculating our final scores, which again are kind of just goofy because I think it missed half of your good answers on question two, but it's okay. It's kind of fun to wrap up like that. Then we're going to dive into the meat and potatoes of... I shouldn't say meat and potatoes. I should say the... Uh, the tea and the liquor of Sunday tea book. Bodique, way to go. Number one, four right answers, tied with Chubajia, uh, Eric, Ray, very close behind, and everybody. Who's the winner? We're all a winner. We're all here sipping tea together, enjoying Sunday tea book, season two, episode one. Woo! All right, let's go back to our regular programming. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Ah, spin the laptop. <sighs> Way to go, guys. That was super fun. I'm super stoked that we are back. Stoked to have a little tea trivia. And calm down. Great right. questions, Bill. Great questions. Thanks. <laughs> and great answers, help. all of you guys. And thanks for participating. Super fun. Oh, he did. JS, yes, a second story. He did all this. So every time it's new for me, and I love it, too. It's so fun. I just uh, sit here, have tea, and just swing and swing and... <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> you guys all did a great job. Okay. Chapter one of the class I complete. Are you guys ready? They're stoked. I can yeah. almost feel their energy coming yeah, through the great. internet at us because TDT really get us a T trivia warm warms us up, but the classic of T is just been they've been just just like dying to see this, so I can feel your energy folks. Yes. In the first, so the chapter one, we will break in about uh, two, a little bit for today and uh, a lot for next time, which is about origin. It will be posted shortly after this video. And in this chapter, you will notice in terms of origin, oftentimes we say origin, we think about, okay, it comes, for example, origin of tea. What is it? It comes from uh, China. That's the origin. But Lu Yu took a very comprehensive view of origin. He talked about where tea is from. He talked about the origin of the tea characters. Mm -hmm. He talked about uh, for another view of the tea is uh, what's the origin of the tea leaf? It comes from the tea bush. So he also describes how the tea plants uh, look like. And he also has a uh, quick summary of the history of tea, very briefly in the content. So that chapter one's name is Origin Yen, is a very diverse view of the origin of the uh, tea. Um, as you know, tea comes from China. The very origin of this plant is in the is in the Yungui Gaoyuan, the plant on a uh, currently located in Sichuan, Yunnan, and uh, Guizhou provinces in China. And um, China was the first to discover, use, and domesticate tea plants uh, with southern uh, years of uh, history. And I think we have uh, talked about the origin, this side of the uh, origin of tea in our previous uh, Sunday mm. tea book quite a lot. So. I would just uh, quickly glance over it. And second is when you look at how he described the look of the tea plant because he doesn't have uh, the modern like uh, modern botany, like right. the plant science that have those uh, super right. there's no Latino word. Yeah, there's yeah. no taxonomical breakdown back at this time for him to lean on. So, uh, so, right. so he used metaphor, which is a phenomenon you will encounter a lot in this book and in various Chinese poems, articles, or ancient style, we love to use metaphors. So he compared tea plants with, uh, say, uh, clover trees, camellia flowers. Clove, clove trees. Oh, clove, sorry. No, it's Clove okay. trees um, and uh, camellia flowers or roots like walnuts. So those are just to mm. uh, help people understand what a tea plant looks like. Probably using things that were contextually like yes. kind of common. Yes, for us it's common. Everybody. For the example, for you, you probably have doesn't you help seen at all. Like a never seen a clove, tree? never seen a walnut tree. But again, right. he's explaining it for yeah, his in audience. In his right? uh, area, yeah. Mm. So um, just 
if you feel that that is weird, rather than explain what it is, why is he using metaphor? It's just a, at that time that's what people used to describe the plant, mm -hmm. and then let's talk about that. Ooh, oh. who is so smart? That's what we're gonna talk about. I got it. Oh, great! Thank you. <laughs> I'm still pretty rusty with tech. <laughs> So these two characters on the uh, screen, can you see the difference between the two or do they look identical to you guys? I'll take a sec. It's kind of like a, a Sesame Street puzzle or those, those little identify the differences puzzle. Mm -hmm. I, wish, I wish I had like the John Madden pen I could circle. Mm. Or you had the John Madden pen so you could circle, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that would be cool. Anyway, just to say those, uh, if you didn't notice, in the middle part, underneath the little hood, there's an extra dash on the right character. This one. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one has a dash, which is oh, a pass. We can't I reach into it. No, we can't it. reach into it. That would be cool if we yes. could ever do that. Yet. Yeah. So it's the middle part. You mm. point that actually pretty... Yeah, pretty really good. I'm kind of right here. Ah, it's really hard to control, but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to get dizzy here. Okay, this middle part, this little dash. That's the extra. <laughs> anyway, so on the left side, the, the, this one? This one. That one there, yeah. The other side. This one. This is the Cha character in Chinese. And the other one is Tu. Can I put it up? Yes. You don't so they pronounce it different way. But before Lu Yu, uh, Tu is actually the, the look of that character is actually commonly used as a, to refer to nowadays what we call Cha. So older times you might call that a Tu. And uh, after Lu Yu is so the classic of T, this Cha character, this one, they become very popular and become almost the standard of yeah. to call in this beverage as cha. He also pointed out there are many other characters that are uh, that were used uh, to refer to uh, tea as well. Some of them we still use nowadays to say ming. Uh, mm. Still in use. Some of them are not in use. Some of them are dialect. And Sometimes we separate the characters and uh, talk about T T T H. What is T H? Is uh, what every T people wanna or every person actually oh. wanna leave a. Separate the characters, like separate the radicals. Yeah, the radicals. The we just do some separation, and because they look like eighty eight plus twenty in Chinese characters. There are Chinese characters about number, right. so that's how this character looks like. So one. 108 years old, 108, this number seems to be hidden in the T character. So if you talk about T age, it means 108 years that's old. That's what we're shooting for, right? Yeah, that's what we're shooting that's what for. we're all shooting for, okay, 108. Yeah. Another interesting thing about uh, this character is actually, uh, in general, it's an uh, interesting thing I think many people might not have realized about the uh, Chinese. What is Chinese? What is Mandarin? Or what is Cantonese, right? Mm. Uh, this character itself, all Chinese people recognize, but mm. how we pronounce it, it depends on what language you speak. I speak dialect, I won't pronounce that as Mandarin do, as Cha. In Mandarin, we call that Cha. For example, in my dialect, we call that Cho. I think sounds pretty different. They're totally different. <laughs> no, Mandarin, at all. Cha, my dialect, Mandarinese, Cho. So there are various, uh, you know, there are so many dialects in China. and uh, But there are only two, in general, two ways of calling tea in the West. Either go with the Cha, this, this pronunciation with various that, ways to That pronounce. sort of sound. Sound. Right? That yeah. sort of. Uh, or the mm. other way is uh, like uh, English tea or French tea. Yeah, like that kind of a pronunciation. And with that uh, pronunciation, you kind of can tell where they got the pronunciation from. Like Cha, uh, like what are other 
culture is Japanese, uh, Indian, East Eastern Europe chai. They often yeah, call that Russia, chai. Russia, uh, no, those yeah. are those are more like a uh, silk road. Like, uh, Earth. We've got a really multicultural group here too. Yeah. Like, let how us let us know what your, your mother tongue or what your culture. How do you guys call tea? Is it mm. sort of similar to tea pay, or is it more like cha cha? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let us Perfect. know. Yeah. Uh, so those are usually northern style of dialect pronunciation is similar in the cha cha that kind of mm. uh, world. While if you pronounce te or uh, French Yours is a little bit closer. Tea? Yeah, Tay. 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 Those are from the south, southern area, like Fujian's dialect. It's uh, actually Tay. Mm. Uh, and uh, Cantonese and all those. Those uh, mostly from Marine Time Silk Road. So slightly, uh, slightly later, and they're all originated in the southern dialect of this character's pronunciation. So, oh, Irish say tay. Even the Irish say tay. Mm. Okay, that's, that's, that's sort of tea-ish, yeah. Yeah, but the, you, just around the world, there are generally just two yeah. strings of them. And Bodhi's culture is chai. Chai, yeah. With the proper spelling above, which oh, is wow. really scary about it. Looks wow. like yan. Igor yeah. is tay. Igor is Czech Republic, right? Yeah. Tay the vocabulary, right? Igor. Igor is a Spanish. Oh, Spanish, Spanish, my bad. Sorry, Igor. I got mixed up. Yeah. T comes from Fujian, yeah, pretty close. Te, right? They have that Te dialect. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. <laughs> I love Eric's granddad already. Because you can't tell if he's being silly or if he's really serious. Uh, born in Berlin, raised in Shanghai. Oh yeah, there we go. Yan's got a little bit of an insight. That's a good one. And Fernanda says it's cha in Brazil. Yeah, 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 exactly. Alderman by cha in Brazil. Yeah, so in general by that you can tell a little bit where the tea mm -hmm. comes from there. And I think that's it for today. We're trying to control that to not over one hour. Oh I yeah, think yeah. We're doing a good job. Just to say that um, that is one of the you know the maritime Silk Road and the regular Silk Road. Did you already say that? Yeah. Oh, she said. That. <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining us, and especially when you all chime in to let us know how you pronounced it. That was really fun. A lot of uh, those I didn't know. I didn't know Irish so too. Yes, it was great to be yeah. back. Obviously, we've got a lot of book ahead of us. Uh, the classic of tea. Uh, it's going to be great. Let mm. me just uh, pop that off. So, um, yeah, check out the uh, website. The video is going to disappear for a little while, but it's all going to come back on YouTube. We're we'll Check our website for the finished translation. I'm going to get you guys a few links down below. Uh, Simmerji, thanks for that suggestion. I did see it. He knows what I mean. Um, I'll, I'll look into that and um, that's it guys um, if you like the video please like I said at the beginning now you have now you know if you liked it so go back and hit that thumbs up if you didn't back then if you knew you were gonna like it thanks for the uh, thanks for the trust <laughs> um, share it with your friends let yep. your let your other teen nerd friends know that we're out here we're back we'll be back next week with uh, episode 2 season 2 Sunday tea book the classic of tea and guys until next week Bye bye. Oops, get my hand. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Oh, oh yeah. Keep steeping. Hang on, hang on. And until next time, keep, keep steeping. steeping.